Hi Harmonies, I hope you're feeling in tune today and if not, I hope this little video helps. So today we have Jodie coming in for her core therapy. If you'd like to support me, please subscribe, please hit the bell so you'll never miss another premiere and also buy me a coffee. Thanks for liking, thanks for commenting, let's have a chat. I want to know how you feel today. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching. Let's spread a little healing. Okay, Victoria here. I've got the lovely Jodie with me again. Hello. My lovely friend <laughs> Jodie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and this time Jodie's going to be having a core therapy treatment as opposed to the last time you saw Jodie, which was probably when you treated me. Yeah. Because you're a beauty therapist and you gave me a lovely facial with yeah. Tropic Skincare. Today we're going to do core therapy. So Jody, tell me, is there anything I need to be looking for? Are you okay? Um, just my shoulders, like usual, just uh, quite tight at the minute. Whereabouts on your shoulders? Um, just in the middle, just either side of my spine probably I'd say. Mm, trapezius. Yeah. So is that from your work? Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 Okay. The way I'm sitting at work. Okay, all right. And core therapy, you always feel better after a treatment, yeah, don't you? Yeah, so good. Yeah? Yeah, instantly. Wonderful. Feel relieved. Yeah, so there are certain techniques that I'll do, like the arm repatterning and neck release, definitely. I yeah, think you the like neck that, release is nice, yeah. Lovely, okay, so we'll do that. And thanks for watching. Please like, comment and share. Let's spread a little healing. Okay, Jodie, we're going to do some kinesiology muscle tests at first. If you could raise your arm for me, I'm going to push here and hold. Okay, and the same with this one and hold. Lovely. Raise a leg. I'm going to push here and hold. Good. Same with this side and hold. Okay, slightly weaker. And this side, both arm and leg and hold. Let's do that again and hold. Okay, that's all right. Your body's telling me something. This side and hold. Stronger, but something going on. So I'm just going to have a little pull of your hair. We'll try this side again and hold. Better. I mean, and hold. Ah, oh, much better. Okay. It's not surprising. It's a very hot day here in the UK. It's what was your car telling you on the way? I think it was 34. 34. Yeah. And set to get a little bit yeah. warmer this it's afternoon. So that's mega for the UK, isn't it? For England. So I'm going to give you a glass of water because yeah. I think you're slightly dehydrated. Probably. Would that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to sit up for me? All right. Okay, let's try those again. Arm and leg and hold. Gosh, oh. how different is that? Yeah. Because the muscles store water and if they don't have enough hydration, they immediately lose their strength. So it just shows in daily life anyway, but especially when exercising, mm -hmm. you really need to be hydrating. And hold. Yeah. Yeah amazing what a difference see you're fine you can go now yeah and hold yeah that's good and across the body and hold oh it's going down any one shoulder worse than another i'd say this side yeah worse. yeah okay and raise an arm and hold good and hold okay elbows coming up today and hold oh and wrist you're right-handed yeah and hold and hip <laughs> and hold good i have been doing a lot of um deep tissue work with my elbow so and hold what part of the body do you work with your elbows around the shoulders maybe. oh okay and do you look after your posture when you're doing that? Do you have wide legs? Yeah, I try to, but yeah. I do a lot. A lot that comes from the shoulders for that, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm just going to have a look at this 
elbow in more detail. Raise an arm and hold. Good. And hold. Yeah. Let's see if it's the outside. And hold. Oh, yes it is. Check the inside and hold. Okay, it's the inside as well. Just going to check your right wrist and hold. Nice. And hold. Oops, okay, so it's coming in. Is it issue? And hold. Mm, uncertain. Bending down and hold. That's fine, okay. So it's in, down, uh, sorry, in, up, out and in of the elbow. Okay, so we're going to have a look at your hip. Just going to check. Looks all right. It's not too high or low. Doesn't look twisted, but I'm just going to have a little feel anyway. Can you give me an arm and hold? Nice. And hold. Oh, let's do that again. And hold. Yep, it's fine. Push them together and hold. Oh, okay. So they're they're losing their togetherness. And hold. That's nice. And hold. Okay, down a bit. So this that one. This is. So can you put two fingers on your pubis symphysis bone, dead center of the pelvis, arm up and hold? No, that's fine. It's good. Okay. We always check that if this one fails, but it's fine. So that can't be too bad. Um, how's tummy been? Yeah. Tummy all right? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So I'll just check it through your dress if mm -hmm. that's all right. Tummy button about there. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Okay, uh, relax your tummy. Have you just eaten? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that a bit? Oh, how does that feel? It's okay. It's all right. Bit, yeah. mm. Okay, can you put two fingers there as deep as I am? Yeah. yeah? And arm up and hold. Okay, it's going down a little bit. I'm just going to do the breaths and open it yeah. for you, but I'll do it. Um, through your dress. So can you give me three nice long breaths? Well done. It gave us a nice little tune then, didn't it? Okay, let's try it again. So just put two fingers there for me. Nice and deep. Yeah. Give me an arm and hold. Nope, totally strong. So that's that's all it needed. Um, shoulders. So let's do just do some arm tests before I turn you over. If you could r just leave your arm there. Raise this one and hold. Okay, going down slightly. If you could put your arm to 90 degrees and hold. Well, one again. Just up to your ear and hold. That's fine. And then up into the air, thumb up and hold. Yep, and then turn your hand around and hold. Okay, slightly. Let's do the same with this side. So just to 20 degrees, arm up on this side and hold. Nice. To 90 and hold. Nice. 180 and hold. That's good. You're better on this side, actually. And hold. Good. And turn your hand around and hold. 
passing everything there. So uh, a few of these on your left. Hmm, interesting. Right, uh, let's turn you over. Can you bend a knee? Can you raise the knee off the couch? I'm going to push here and hold. Strong. That's all that running you do. And hold. No, that's good. That's good. I'm pleased with that. How did your neck feel? Feels sore. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, I always look at the neck, so I'll be looking at that anyway. Right. Let's give you a nice tween R. Let's see how your body moves. Tween R T U I N A is Chinese massage and it's this rocking type of massage th through clothes or can be on the skin but tends to be through clothes where we just um, work actually directly on the on the spine as you can feel. I've got my hand on your spine there. Um, and it creates that lovely wave-like movement through the spine. And that's when I know if the spine is playing ball, and not too tight, not subluxated, where one vertebra is out of its normal line of uh, the spine, or fixated, where it's attached and fixed to the vertebra next to it. But no, this feels good. And you were just saying it feels good to have done. It does, yeah. Great. It feels like you're loose Exactly. Nice and loose. How's your temperature? Are you okay cool wise? Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, you normally come in here and say you want all the heat on, all the covers, the heated bed. <laughs> what well, would you really? <laughs> Thirty four degrees. Yeah, it is. Yes, I'm just picking up a bit of tightness around here. Yeah. Upper left pelvis. So because you've come in saying about your shoulders, I'll do some shoulder work with you today. I'm going to do a wing stretch, an arm repattern, obviously this tween R, a drunken walk and a scapular float. Tight there? Yeah. Mm. Sort of. mm. Now working with two hands to encourage softness into the soft tissue and the muscles of the pelvis, the back and the shoulder girdle. This helps not only this torso area, but it also helps the limbs. It helps the shoulders, the legs, even up into the head and down into the feet. The more softness that we can introduce here, encouraging the muscles and soft tissue to let go, the more you will see a wave-like motion as I apply this pressure to the upper part of the back, you can see the pelvis rocking and that is beautiful. Now working into a wing stretch, which is a lovely motion to release that lovely left shoulder. That's good, nice and loose, lovely. 
And this wing stretch is quite a powerful manoeuvre, but actually achieves amazing results in separating the scapula from the tightness of the upper back, the shoulder, and to the vertebra. It isolates the scapula. You can see me holding under the arm, the shoulder there, supporting it. And I'm not forcing, I'm simply encouraging with softness that circular action in the right direction. And then applying a little pressure downwards, bouncing that right hand scapula, the shoulder blade, down. And then that two handed opposite pressure, pushing the shoulder down and the soft tissue between the scapula and the vertebra upwards. Now addressing the tissue below the scapula, so down over the ribs, to the spine, to the pelvis and the sacrum. Now I'm looking at the drunken walk where it's simply feeling into each side of the spine using my thenar muscles which are at the base of the thumb and using the hard tissue at the base of each hand to apply pressure in a downward motion towards the pelvis. I'm literally walking, applying quite a lot, lot of pressure here actually. Walking each side down the spine and slowly coming back up. And if I find somewhere that needs more attention, I will just stop there for a little while and allow the body to let go. It always happens, it always lets go. So it's a beautiful thing to achieve, a beautiful thing to experience under my hands, feeling the body let go. And I know that then the spine will realign and the back will feel so much looser. It's a great result. Now coming up to the leg repatterning, working into the foot, releasing the hard tissue between the big toe and the ball of the foot. Applying pressure with my thumb down in a line from the kidney down to the bladder to encourage a detox. And now watching that opposite hip rise as I introduce circles with the foot using the leg as a lever to rebalance the pelvis. So here I am just picking up Jodie's right foot and at first just introducing my hands, feeling into the softness, the palpability of the fascia. Jodie's foot, the structure, and I'm just working my thumb around the base of the ball of the toe, feeling how it gives, but also I'm encouraging it to soften and to give, to give way. Because the more softness that we have in our feet, the more they are able to support us. And these will actually align our knees and pelvis if our feet are in the right position. And now using the leg as a lever on the pelvis by holding the foot, just bouncing the foot out in a particular fashion out to one side and now doing a sacral fixation where I'm actually studying the sacrum while using both feet as levers 
to realign the balance, the posture of the sacrum. So good, so important for the whole structure of the body. Now I'm enjoying working on a sacral float, which means two hands overlapping while Jodi sinks deeper and deeper into her beautiful reverie and finds herself. The two hands overlapping here are tuning into the energy of the pelvis feeling whether there is any movement so the pelvis should actually be rotating in a figure of eight fashion you okay oh that's nice One of the main reasons we apply a sacral float during a core therapy treatment is to tune in to the manner that the pelvis is aligned while checking out the cerebral spinal fluid that actually has a pulse and this pulse is not aligned to our breath or our heart rate it has its own pulse and the fluid pulses around the brain and down the side of the spine in the dural tube and this dural tube is tracked at S2 which is sacral bone number two just underneath my palms and then comes back up the spine to continue its journey back around the brain and down again so obviously the tube is present at all of those places including through the neck. So the sacrum and the neck are so important to treat during core therapy. During this part of the treatment, I can become very, very in tune with the patient on the couch with the movement of the pelvis and the pulse of the fluid and what I'm trying to facilitate is simply the correct flow of that fluid and the movement of the pelvis. The heat under my hands being double handed at this point can be quite intense but it is felt in a very reassuring and calming manner by the person on the couch. You can see here it's making me smile, it makes me feel so rewarded that the pelvis is mu moving beautifully. And then to finish off the sacral float, this Qigong healing treatment, I have my hand at the very top of the the fluid movement 
around the brain at the back of the cranium, but also still with one hand on the sacrum. And I'm feeling the relationship between the top and the bottom. And after a couple of minutes here, a few breaths, I will wait until there is a deep release where I can feel that the spine lengthens. It's quite subtle, but to a therapist it's actually quite obvious. The most amazing sensation for both the receiver and the giver. Okay, nice and slowly, just bring yourself around, have a couple of deeper breaths, and when you're ready, you can turn over onto your back. Just give me your arm, nice and loose. Bend your elbow, lovely and loose. I've got you. This is called an arm repatterning, a Chinese technique from the toolbox of TCM, where I'm literally winding the arm in two different directions in order to create the right alignment of the fascia and the skeletal system which will help the shoulder. It's using the arm as a lever in order to work on the shoulder and, and the neck. Coming to the other arm and of course Jodie came in reporting that she was having some tight shoulder issues from all the work leaning over clients working in the salon and again you can see here how I'm using the arm to loosen any tightness from the muscles around the arm and the muscles across the top of the shoulder into the neck it can look like a strange movement but actually it feels amazing once you release once you let the therapist just take hold and let them do their thing, it feels incredible. And now having done some arm repatterning to both arms, shoulders, I'm now working on a Qigong float, feeling the energy to both joints of the elbow and the wrist on the right hand side and helping to encourage that healing, that letting go up into the shoulder and the neck. Now coming back to the left side and of course these shoulders did come up in the kinesiology muscle tests at the start so Jodie is right-handed and her right shoulder was hurting her but actually the left shoulder was the one telling me that there is some misalignment there. So I'm really feeling that energy. I've got one palm under the elbow, another under the wrist. I'm hardly moving the arm at all, just very subtly feeling the heat, the movement, whether there's any clicks and crunches and making sure that there is a good flow of energy. Now feeling into the lower legs and the feet, feeling my thumbs into the side of those leg bones which help me find out if there's any tension down there which obviously would then be felt in the pelvis 
And during the contralateral test that came up earlier, Jodie's right wrist seemed not to be quite in position. So I'm just working on the joint of the wrist, the fascia, but also the energy that flows from the body to the hand via the wrist. I'm working out if there is a sense of a blockage, any stagnation at the wrist. And encouraging a good flow, some good chi. Having tuned in to that sense, I'm now using my thumbs to work out and treat the lower arm, encouraging the letting go again, that soft tissue, working out if there are any clicks and crunches along the way that need to be rectified. The heat at this point tells me if the flow is working well. There should be a good amount of heat but not too hot. And then up into the right elbow, just needing a little assistance from my knee underneath to support it. And with two hands, this is where I'm tuning into the energy that flows along the elbow between my hands. I'm introducing a little movement and encouraging an opening up of that joint. I'm envisaging a beautiful green light and the green light starts at the very center inside the elbow and as I introduce the movement, the heat, and that sense of healing, I envisage that green light slowly growing. And as it shines and extends its rays to all sides of the elbow, this therefore brings healing. It brings an opening up, a dispelling of any tightness and stagnation, encourages flow and a relaxation of the joint. And continuing the Qigong this time with more movement as I let the arm tell me where it wants to go. Not going anywhere where there's tightness, only going where there is flow. And the arm is healed, it is rectified. Now settling down to treat Jodie's neck, shoulders, the cranial bones around the head and all of this treatment is especially for correcting the vertebra, the seven main vertebra of the neck in order that that releases the flow of blood which brings chi and energy 
and that in turn will help supply better thinking, cognitive ability, far less occurrence of headaches and brain fog, that feeling of congestion and lack of clarity with thinking and being able to make decisions. So you can see I'm using my fingers just to work out at the moment what the neck vertebra are telling me, whether any of them are stuck. And then I tilt Jody's head backwards, how it should do. Not everyone's head does do this. But I've got my fingers in a straight line, all eight fingers together, above the line of the vertebra, immediately below the occiput bone of the back of the skull. And this tilting of the neck at this point helps to unfix the top vertebra, which is called cervical one, which tends to get stuck on the occiput bone. And that is a perfect alignment. You see my fingers, if anything, are tilting back towards Jody's forehead. And it means that Jody's head comes up and then tilts back. Absolutely perfect for a good neck and cranial alignment. Now looking at the right side of Jody's neck, mainly looking at the structure, the bones, the vertebra there. In checking each one out, making sure that each vertebra is soft and allowing movement when I apply a little pressure to each vertebra separately. And what should happen is that on applying a little pressure, the neck and head should bounce. There should be, like you can see right now, there should be a little movement in the head as I apply pressure separately to each vertebra. And now I'm working my thumb a little bit away from the main line of vertebra towards the spinal processes. And by pressing on each process, which can feel quite sore depending on if a vertebra feels stuck. By applying pressure there, the neck should, or the head should bounce, but also it, it means that the vertebra will then release its grip. Because I'm applying pressure to its furthest point. Sometimes I can feel a huge difference from the start to the finish of one of these neck releases. And I keep coming back to the occipital release at the very top where the neck tilts backwards gently. Jodie loves a good neck release because it feels so releasing and relieving. The pressure, the weight of our head on our neck and shoulders is so immense, especially if our head at any point is tilted forwards. And of course she does a lot of couch work 
as a beauty therapist looking down and leaning down to her clients. So this action has an immediate relieving effect by ensuring that the head is aligned again back on top of the neck and shoulders and not leaning forwards where the weight of the head is felt far greater by the neck and shoulders. It needs to be on top and not leaning forwards. And now pushing each shoulder point away from the head by holding the head forwards while bouncing the opposite side shoulder downwards. There should be a nice bounce here where the arm extends away from the head. And then I hold it for quite a few seconds in order that the shoulder releases. The wonderful thing about Qigong is that there are so many ways that it can be used, directed and applied. This is one of the first cranial ways that I use Qigong with most of my clients. Everyone benefits from this incredible directed treatment. I have my fingers underneath Jodie's shoulders because when Jodie arrived she mentioned how her shoulders had been hurting. I have my thumbs just gently placed around the side of the neck and the palms are touching the neck to the back. The heat is starting to grow where I am, feeling what the neck and shoulders are telling me. I'm getting a sense that the right shoulder needs a little more TLC so I've managed to place my hands underneath quite a long way down under the right shoulder and a little higher up under the left. So my palm is basically touching the whole of the scapula on the right side, the shoulder blade. And I'm encouraging the scapula to let go and to descend in order that it doesn't tighten and therefore raise the muscles higher, but that it lets go and actually lowers itself. You know that feeling when your shoulders feel quite high, they feel like they're coming up around your earlobes. Well, this treatment encourages them to let go and descend. The energy, the heat and the healing taking place just feels amazing. I really do feel like I benefit from every treatment I give as well as my client. 
Now this is a frontal bone float. The forehead cranial bone is called the frontal bone. And you can see I'm really enjoying these Qigong applications. I have my palm just very gently placed on the frontal bone. My fingers are hardly touching. And I have my other hand at the back of the head. So then when I first applied my two palms to the front and back of the head, I allow the head to move where it wants to go. And in this case, Jodie's head just wanted to tilt to the left. You can see Jodie's breathing has resumed a very comfortable level. My breathing normally tends to mirror my clients. Whenever I need to check that my breathing is in line, I just open my eyes and check their abdomen. And nine times out of 10, I notice that my breathing is exactly the same rhythm as my clients. Now you can see I'm not doing this at all, but Jodie's head just gently and naturally turns the other way to the right. I have my hand behind and the other still gently on the forehead. The feeling of stress relief at this point is amazing. This is the main reason for giving this particular Qigong healing technique. And that is for dispelling stress and head tension. We all know that when we are trying to think through a problem whether we have a headache or whether we're feeling stressed, our hand tends to go to our forehead to naturally massage away the tension there. Our forehead does hold on to a lot of stress and this technique really helps to get rid of it. In fact, I've never known a situation where I've given this treatment and it hasn't worked. Everyone tunes into this. In fact, today I was treating a three-year-old little girl who's finding it difficult to sleep, worrying about things. And I know that she will benefit from that immensely. She completely relaxed and let the treatment happen, just as Jody is now. Wonderful. Okay, slowly take a nice couple of breaths. Continue with the deep breathing and send your oxygen and your awareness down to your feet, giving them a nice stretch, splaying the toes, stretching the soles, turning the ankles. And breathe now to your hands separating the fingers, widening the palms, and turning the wrists. 
and breathe to your shoulders giving them a little rotation a, a circle in one direction and in the other direction breathing into your abdomen and when you're ready bringing your arms up if it feels comfortable right above your head for a nice long body stretch Open your eyes when you're ready. Are you okay? Yeah. So. Hmm? That's nice. Oh, good. Sleepy. Yeah, sleepy. Mm. So, um, I'm just going to do a couple of retests. Mm -hmm. Can I have this leg and this arm? Sorry. This That's it. And hold. Oh. And hold. I'm just wondering if you're dehydrated again so let's just see and hold no okay so I'm just going to come around and feel that hip at the back and that's all yeah. and hold no okay uh, what else could it be can you put this finger of a ha this hand up Turn the roof of your mouth, the back of the dome, yeah, and then give me arm and leg and hold, yeah, okay, so before you go, you have got time, haven't you, I'm just going to do an SBS re-pattern, do you remember me doing this with you yeah. before, yeah, it's interesting it didn't pick it up earlier, yeah. but obviously it picked up that you were dehydrated, which is, if you like, more important than the SBS, yeah. Um, so maybe it ma masked it somehow so um, I don't know if you remember but I'll be here for a minute or two but it will feel like a long time if you close your eyes if you feel comfortable to you might see colours while I'm there it's a, it's a lovely but strange feeling yeah okay just relax, relax your jaw and breathe. This wonderful treatment that only needs to be done occasionally with the odd person is called a SBS float, a sphenobacilla synchondrosis. Again, it's a case of using Qigong in a specified manner by very gently touching the roof of the mouth because just above the back of the roof of the mouth at the back of the dome not too far away from there is the pituitary gland which helps regulate and govern the release of hormones of the body. This may include thyroxine from the thyroid, adrenaline from the adrenals coping with stress levels. It helps the reproductive hormones, testosterone, estrogen and progesterone and many others. So this very relaxing treatment helps to rebalance the position of the pituitary which sits above the SBS. Okay, so let's check that ipsy test again. This arm, this leg, I'm going to push and hold. Okay, it's actually a bit stronger, but still going down. So I'm just going to have another little feel of this hip. Okay, and this arm and this leg, and hold. Okay, so now it is the hip. So I'm just going to do... Okay, so... 
I'm going to put a sarong over you. And if you don't mind, I'm going to put my hand yeah. underneath your sacrum. Yeah. But it means you bending your knees, raising your sacrum, and I'm going to put my hand underneath that part, and then you're going to put your knees and legs back down. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you could bend your knees, I'm just going to put my hand between your knees, right underneath your sacrum. If you could raise your sacrum up, that's it. Lovely. And then back down. Yeah, don't worry about the weight. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I'm just going to put my arm across you here. Just to uh, hold your hips in. So this is actually a sacral float, which is what I was doing to you while you were uh, prone, lying prone. But this is lying supine. It's a I don't know if I've done this particular one to you before, yeah. So I have my elbow touching Jodie's left hip, my fingers wrapped around Jodie's right hip and therefore holding the hips together nice and firmly creating that security and solidity. Then with a flat palm underneath the very base of Jodie's spine under the sacrum, it creates a lovely three-fold hold, a beautiful healing togetherness for the pelvis. Okay, so Jodie, so I just want you to visualize your pelvis, your hips, Bring your awareness to this area and then just feel that they are strong. Feel that the structure, the position and posture of the pelvic girdle is absolutely perfect. Feel that they can hold the whole spine, the whole body above the pelvis. Feel that they are sitting correctly on the top of your legs. Feel that it can move without hindrance. Feel that there is a beautiful rhythm when you walk and the rhythm of the pelvis is the figure of eight. And bring a beautiful color to your pelvis. Visualize or imagine Putting a beautiful sarong over or around your pelvis. Picture a lovely colour. A colour of healing. It might be green or it might be a pale pink. tend to see colours and I immediately envisaged a pale pink. Not quite appropriate on a, a hot day but I imagined it as a like a slightly fluffy silk scarf that gave you protection, strength but also a beautiful feeling of love and healing being that pale pink colour in tune with your heart like a pink quartz. Lovely and just raise your pelvis again for me slightly and down. 
Okay, so we're going to do that test again. If you could give me your arm and your leg, I'm going to push here and hold really strong and I was pushing a lot so you obviously needed that it's interesting because quite often with core we manage to get everything in before the end and I've given you a couple of things now afterwards but they were needed otherwise you'd have walked away from here not quite right and you wouldn't have felt like you normally do but I think you will now they, that was good um, a couple more retests so we've done the ipses. Just want to have a look at this elbow. If you could just leave your arm over the sarong. Just going to give it a nice squeeze. Raise this arm and hold. Nice. And again. And hold. Okay. And again. And hold. Yep. And hold. No, it's okay. I'll keep an eye on that wrist. It was just juddering slightly. Uh, right hip. And give me your arm and hold. Nice. Just want to test that one as well. And hold. Let's have a look at whether they're twisted. And arm um, and hold. Yep, I knew that was going to pass. And hold. Lovely. Good, it's intact. Um, so, last one. Um, I've got down, it was your left arm. I think it was your right arm. I've got my lefts and rights all mixed up today. So can you leave your arm there? Raise this one and hold. Yep. And bring it to 90 degrees and hold. Lovely. Up by your ear and hold. And then up into the air and hold. Good. And turn your hand around and hold really strong so I think your shoulders are going to feel a lot better so we're done with the retests you can get up when you're ready my pleasure so Jodie you've just had a nice core treatment how do you feel very relaxed my back feels nice and open it's straight actually oh ah, yeah. good like if it's been released it feels good great yeah, so mm. we did a lot of shoulder and arm work mm. today because I used the arms as levers to work on the shoulders, really. So hopefully they feel looser. Yeah, they do. More mobile as well, more yeah. flexible. Yeah. So I don't know if it'll come across in the video, but during that, I think it was during the sacral float, you did a like a twitch yeah. on your leg or... Yeah. Was it your leg or...? My leg. Yeah. I definitely fell asleep, I And think. so you might see me jump. I'm yeah. not sure whether I jump, but I, <laughs> I, I am quite a jumpy person. <laughs> it so. woke me up when I jolted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. But I don't know if you know, and it's a really good thing, mm. but um, some people are quite twitchy when they're having core, especially the Qigong treatments, which yeah. are the floats, like on the sacral float or the neck float, cranial floats, you know. And some people don't at all. Mm. And there's not many that do twitch. But um, my friend, who's a core therapist, and we do swaps on each mm. other, she does. Oh, really? And she's really in tune with energy. Yeah. She's oh, really wow. in tune. So when she treats me or mm. anyone, she twitches as well, even when she's treating oh, people. Oh, really? Yeah. But I say twitch, um, her hand will shake, yeah. like little rotate from side to side. It's always one side of her body. Oh, my God. Um, and then when I'm treating her... And so she twitches when there's something to be treated and it'll stop moving when it's, it's she's better. fine and, oh, really? and it's better. Oh, exactly. Wow. And so when you twitch mm. and there are a few twitches, it wasn't mm. just that one. It might not come across on the video because yeah. it's quite subtle. And you obviously I've got it. my hand mm. on you, so I'm much more in tune with you. But mm. there, there's quite a lot of very tiny movements 
more internal yeah. than we'd be able to see. Mm. But I think it's a good thing. Yeah. And I think it shows that you're quite in tune with your energy. It, yeah, probably, definitely. Mm. Yeah. That's and you're nice. not aware of them? Um, not really. I guess sometimes when I'm treating as well, you can sense the energy sometimes. But you don't move? No, then? I don't move, no. But you, I know what you're saying, you can feel it in other people sometimes yeah it's like a deepness yeah isn't it mm. yeah uh, it's a lovely feeling but anyway, yeah i just wanted to share that with you because i don't i was more aware of it today than other times yeah yeah and obviously we treat each other every yeah. month but uh definitely a lot today mm. that was really good yeah thank you so i hope it's helped you and yeah, you you're good. you're good for another month mm. now yeah i <laughs> <laughs> hope so yeah okay <laughs> So thanks for joining us and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching the completion of Jodie's lovely core treatment. Let's spread a little healing. Have a lovely week.